Um, so yeah, so our next speaker is going to be uh, Zheng Yang. He's from uh, uh, Jefferson Lab, uh, talking about some data streaming uh, in the IRI. So great, take it away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Jen, and I'm a postdoc at JLab. So I'm going to present the data streaming processing and also the integrated research infrastructure across facilities. So uh, we will explore how remote data stream processing for nuclear physics experiments becomes possible via uh, various projects at JLab. So before I dig into the details, I'd like to briefly introduce JLab. So JLab, a Thomas and Jefferson National Accelerator Facility, also known as Jefferson Lab, or JLab is a DOE National Lab located in Newport News, Virginia. So we have uh, four experimental stations at JLab with different detector setup. And currently, uh, and upcoming experiments have higher data acquisition needs. Uh, so this leads to our projects in today's talk. So this uh, slide is showing our grand challenge at JLab. So let's explore some key points here. So our motivation it stems from the massive uh, data generated by the detector, such as class 12 and the GRUREX detectors. These detect detectors produce several petabytes of data every year. And so our primary goal is to uh, remove the separation between data readout and the analysis. We will achieve this goal by leveraging streaming readout and processing so that re real-time data handling becomes possible. And I will cover three projects today. So for data acquisition, the processing is covered by the R7 coda. And uh, for the transport, uh, transport system, it's uh, covered by uh, HFAT. And then finally, the workflow management and the distributed resource utilization is covered by uh, Giraffe. So this slide is uh, to show the comparison between a traditional data acquisition and a streaming readout, and also the batch processing and the stream processing. So this slide is just to uh, bring up our relation between these technology and our projects. So RSS provides a stream processing workflow that can constant, constant, constantly process incoming stream, and the giraffe provides management of distributed resources uh, we take uh, advantage of inherent nature of ability to scaling or for the streaming processing. And finally, between the data acquisition and the stream, streaming processing, the low latency and the efficient transport system, uh, HFAT kissing. So here is the outline. So let's start uh, discussing about the first one. Uh, it's about data streaming processing. So first, I'd like to uh, briefly introduce the data acquisition that we're using now. So it's called a CODA. So it is the common data acquisition system used across all four experimental halls. And we can think of the CODA as a versatile toolkit, a set of building blocks for a data acquisition. And uh, uh, it's been in production since 1995, uh, but it's uh, involving and adapting to the needs of the cutting edge experiment. And unlike a traditional systems, CODA can simultaneously read uh, trigger data and it's a powerful cap capability that sets it apart. And the current version is actually uh, designed so that it can work as a trigger or streaming systems. And our goal, goal is to use stream readout without any event identification during data acquisition. So the customers of the CODA data, process, uh, data processing frameworks, uh, here you can see that uh, now different holes have their own uh, preference. So as part of the grand challenge with de developing a data stream processing framework called ERSEP, which is uh, transform how we process physics data, making it seamlessly efficient and unified. Uh, so this is the class 12 detector with its components and the data processing diagram here. So the, the left side is the event reconstruction workflow and the right is the, uh, for the physics analysis. And we also sh uh, have another detector called the GRUX detector. And this is also the workflow for the factory-based data processing applications. So uh, inspired by the CODA, let me introduce the RSAP workflow. So ERSAP is a powerful framework designed for the data stream, uh, data stream processing in nuclear physics. And it's like a toolbox for handling real-time data. 
The components include user engine, shared memory, uh, data processing station, orchestral network, and data. Uh, yeah, so notice that the uh, actor is a combination uh, of uh, user engine and the data processing stations. Okay, so why Earth and Matters? So it's a react reactive, uh, meaning it's a responsive suitability to data events, and it follows the actor model where each component plays a role. And finally, it's, ba it's based on the flow based programming, ensuring efficient uh, data flow. So, in summary, Earth is our back stage crew orchestrating processing and transforming data streams. So after introducing data processing framework, I will introduce uh, the transport system. So it's a, a ISNET JLF FPGA accelerated transport system, also known as HFAT. So let's dive into some uh, details. So as its core, HFAT combines the smart load balancing with unique event identification and efficient data transport. Imagine it as a well orchestrated symphony where every instrument plays its part sim seamlessly. So here is how it works. So first uh, we have the source switch. Uh, so these are like data entry points that feed data into the system. And then we have the load balancer. It's like conductor ensuring data flows smoothly to the right destination. And then it has two components, control plane and the data plane. So the control plane dynamically balances cluster node workflow via uh, the feedbacks from the from the class nodes. And then for the data planes, uh, it redirects re data event UDP packets to the cluster nodes. And for the host, uh, for the cluster nodes, these are our analysts. So building and analyzing events. So uh, why HFAT matters? HFAT leverage FPGA technology is like having a turbocharged engine for processing data streams. And for a performance, HFAT ensures optimal performance by efficiently handling data from source to destination. Right now, uh, the current speed is like uh, 100 gigabits per second. We utilize the UDP transport. And uh, in this approach, data even packetized into UDP and the re reassemble at the receiver side. Okay, so uh, this is the slide. This slide is to show how HFAT works as illustrated in the informative diagram here. So starting from the uh, here, like two data sources, source one and the source two, and each source is equipped uh, a uh, packetizer that can process the, into two packets per event. Then these packets are then direct to the load balancer here at ISNAT. Uh, East and then the, East, the load balancer will play a crucial role to efficiently distribute three packets among three work nodes CN1 to CN3. And this ensures that processing is balanced and optimized for speed and uh, efficiency. Then the is the stream well goes to the reassembly at the uh, worker node here. So now uh, take CNY as an example, Reass reassembly assembles UDP packets and the transfer to the, to, the, uh, to the buffer here. So we have the event transfer buffer that temporarily holds the data before it uh, undergoes to the reconstruction workflow. And the, finally, the workflow will, will do the anal analysis and uh, reconstruction. So the conclusion is that uh, HFAT is a robust uh, system designed to optimize package transport from the multi-sources uh, to the multiple uh, worker nodes through efficient load balancing. Okay, so this is the summary for my uh, first part of the talk. So basically, ERSEP provides real-time data processing and HFAT provides a small load balancing and a low latency data transport. Next, uh, I will uh, explore the we will explore the project of the integrated research uh, infrastructure across facility or a uh, giraffe. So, may, imagine it as a bridge connecting different compute sites. So here, giraffe motivation lies in the efficiently managed workload across distributed computer resources after streaming readout and the transport. So first, we emphasize that uh, this integration provides the capability of the online migration and the management of workloads from the control plane, and uh, it ensures the seamless operation and the efficiency. 
Then the second we highlighted the feasibility, uh, the feasibility of sharing data across multiple location, chronic collaboration and the information exchange. And the last one is for the cost reduction is very uh, important that we have the benefit achieved by minimizing the need of the duplicate equipments. So these, uh, uh, these uh, diagram here, the image here is the, there's a giraffe on the side stands tall overseeing everything and it serves as a visual reminder that uh, the integration enhances efficiency and the sustainability. Okay, so uh, here I just wanted to uh, discuss a little bit about the advantage and the challenges of, uh, associated with the computing integration. So on the left hand side, we have the outline some advantage. So uh, integration facilitates uh, streamline management and the control of the workflow across uh, different re compute resources. And uh, this enables efficient utilization of various computing elements. And you also foster the data sharing across multiple locations. Uh, it prompts the cooperation and re reduce the cost. To the challenge here, we face this issue such as hardware heterogeneity, which uh, brings the additional difficulty. And uh, to overcome this challenge, we have to be careful uh, of planning and coordinating. Uh, uh, it's a very essential issue to maximize data processing and the science output. So in conclusion is that uh, even we have the significant advantage to computing integration. It's actually uh, pretty crucial that we address the inherent challenge effectively to reach the maximum uh, benefits. So here is the uh, giraffe architecture, a system designed for efficient uh, integration uh, of, for the uh, distributed resources. So allow me to guide you through the key components here. So the first one is called the, uh, the JFN, Giraffe Facility Manager. So the, the JFN plays a crucial role in maintaining our, our resource pool. It's uh, periodically scrapped uh, data from each computer facility, ensuring an up-to-date in inventory for the available re resources. Then we have the J JCS, Giraffe Central Service, and the JIM, Giraffe Resource Management. So we can think of, think of the JS, JCS as our central command it initiates the pilot job via J JIM, and the JIM will list the resources reported by the JFN, and, and, and they will be waiting for the utilization. And notice that our design for the JIM is actually working in user space, so meaning that it should work in the heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous uh, HPC setups. And then goes to the JMS draft matching service algorithm. As the JIM executes, the JMS comes into play. It updates the resources table to match user request. And finally, we have the front end, the draft front end JFE. Uh, so it manages user requests, it populates the user workflow request table. So in summary, the this architecture stands as our commitment to seamless and efficient computing. And this is the, uh, this slide presents an overview of the giant leveraging Kubernetes. Let's uh, dive into a little details here. So first I'd like to give a little uh, brief introduction to Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, there is a control plane acting as the master node overseeing the uh, Kubernetes operations. And then the Kubelet is a vital component installed in the worker nodes, establish a connection to the container D socket. And here it's very important to realize that in, in, installation cube, Kubelet in worker nodes uh, usually requires root potential because this connection to the uh, container D. So it's making building a Kubernetes cluster uh, made of the HPC resources difficult. And here our JRM is a cu custom Kubernetes. It's enhanced by the bash commands and the operation in user space. So it basically translates objects in regular Kubernetes into bash commands and then other object, objects specifically for giraffe. 
uh, so it ensures a seamless integration and functionality. And also GIM makes uh, the lifecycle parts and the containers transparent and accessible for giraffe control plane. Monitoring these elements in streamline using regular met metric server in Kubernetes. Uh, so it ensures real-time monitoring and analysis. And we also uh, integrated the workload specific monitoring through the Prometheus servers. And this boosts our analytic cap capability, providing details, insights, customized for uh, some specific workloads. So this diagram is to show that actually what a, a Kubernetes uh, cluster can consist of the regular and the custom accumulate. So this slide is to present the, uh, the significant benefits of using Giraffe. So Giraffe uh, stands out for its contributivity and uh, agility. It enhances, enhances with Kubernetes flexibility, so it can uh, efficiently monitor and uh, monitor uh, and controls distribution resources and the workloads. Also, the Kubernetes plays a crucial role in making the make, making this possible. And why it's distinguished from you, a simple just some user submit the job to the Slurm is because usually if you Use the slum to submit the job. Users will lose the control of their job. And also, uh, because Giraffe backed by JRM, so it operates in user space. And this versatility allows Giraffe to utilize a wide range of resources. Uh, so this uh, diagram is just simply wants to show that Giraffe can seamlessly connect to multiple compute resources. Um, it's even uh can include like the uh, GCP or AWS, like some commercial hardware resources. So in, in essential, so essentially Giraffe is an elastic Kubernetes cluster. It adapts to diverse resources while ensuring control of workloads. So apart from the, the Giraffe framework, uh, to optimize the use of the compute resource, it needs uh, some further development. So the first one is the optimizing resource allocation and the utilization using uh, statistical or AI methods. And the second one is focusing on the seamless workflow migration and the data stream processing. For the, the, the second point, I will present the concept validation experience for the remote stream processing. Okay, so to optimize the use of resource efficiency, we can consider two key components, a location and the management. For a location, server needs resources for smooth performance and the reliability, and the effective location ensures we use uh, resources wisely. So uh, let's think about this, like you, you distribute uh, pizza in, in, at the party, everyone gets their fair share. And for the management beyond location, we manage these resources based on the CPU, memory, storage, and the network uh, bandwidth. So proper management keeps our system efficient and responsive. Okay. So for the resource optimization for the, uh, of Giraffe here, we have some insights and the challenge. So the insight is that we, we want to have the accurate resource estimates so this allows to the better planning and allocation and to collect historical utilization data helps identify uh, the improvement and the optimization optimized resource allocation and finally by analyzing the gap between estimates and utilization giraffe can make informed uh, decision for the future workloads and for the challenge you be aware of over location and under uh, utilization due to the in inaccurate resources estimates. And the lack of utilization data can lead to uh, inefficient resources management and the reduced productivity. So uh, the finally, finally bridging the gap between the estimates and the utilization requires system of ongoing monitoring and adjustments. And also, Tia just want to mention that another way to increase the efficiency is by optimizing the text execution. You can, uh, like, how to efficiently run in a multiple task and to, or to, uh, 
prioritize our time management and also uh, to set up an automatic workflow. So, uh, yeah, so once we have the uh, historical utilization data, we can actually try to use the statistical or machine learning models to optimize the allocation and utilization for resources uh, for the future workloads. So uh, th let's go to the uh, second part. So here I just want to show that we did the validation experience using the several uh, projects at JLab, uh, including RSAP, EdgeFed, and Giraffe. So, so on the left-hand side here, you can see the steps involved in our data processing collaboration. So here, in summary, the real-time data stream flow from the JLab to NERSC through EdgeFed load balancer. At the uh, NERSC HPC cluster, our data undergoes processing. And the discontinued data streaming loop supports effective event reconstruction in experiments. And the right side is the uh, how the workflow developed, uh, uh, deployed. So in summary, the GRAP plays a role in de de uh, deploying and monitoring outside workflows uh, on various uh, nodes and nodes. Okay, so th this is the this is to show that the uh, the experiments of the remote streaming of the class 12 data collected at JLab and the process at NERSC and via the HFAT, uh, HFAT transport systems at ISNET here. Okay, so I'll go through uh, each step here. So the first one is the stream from the JLab go through HFAT low balancer and it read direct to the reassembly at NERSC. And this, this is the, this is deployed by the giraffe. And the second one is the stream goes to the Earth's workflow for processing and the, uh, analysis. Then the, in real time, so the analysis results showing the histogram of the physics event pi zero mass. And then we uh, stream back to the gel lab and uh, write the stream to the file for the uh, storage if necessary. So in summary, this validation uh, validation experiment proves that it is, it is possible to have the remote streaming processing via the each different components here. So this is my summary for the giraffe. So basically, this project provides uh, feasibility of workload rollover bring computer computing facility together and then increase the uh, science rate. Uh, so this is my main takeaway. Uh, ERSAP is the uh, reactive and ac actor model and it's a flow-based uh, programming. So it's designed for data streaming processing in real physics. And HFAT is, this has a smart load balancing and they leverage the FPGA technology to uh, optimize the data transport. And finally, uh, Giraffe leveraging Kubernetes framework provides a solution for computing infrastructure integration. Thank you so much for in the, uh, your attention. Great, thank you. Uh, so I actually start off with a question. So this Giraffe Kubernetes framework, you said that it's running in uh, user space, correct? Yeah. So is it running? Mm -hmm. So I saw, yeah. so it's running bash, but then is that bash then running a container of some sort, yes. or is it? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's basically run the the command. Like if we, we use shifter, you just like shifter run, like that bash command. Yeah. Okay. How generic is this? Could could someone else take this and then use it as a way to run Kubernetes on a unprivileged system? Yes, because because you. So there are two things. So one thing is that if you want to use this giraffe uh, Kubernetes, it's, it's connect to the bash command. So basically, like every Linux machine should have the bash command available in user space. And also, if you want to use the uh, Kubernetes for another custom service, you can just uh, design your own Kubernetes, actually. Yeah. For example, if you want to connect your Kubernetes to some API, you can also you know, try to generate one. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions online or in the room? All right. 
Let's thank our speaker again.